Good morning, everyone. A special welcome to Professor Lindy Wezungu, the Executive Dean of the College of Graduate Studies, to Professor Rosemary Muketsi, the former Executive Dean of the College of Human Sciences, Professor Tennyson Mukachini, the Acting Director of the School of Transdisciplinary Research and Institutes, Mr. Mazeteze from our Student Representative Council, members of management, all our special distinguished guests, members of staff and students, all protocol observed, you are all very welcome to today's event. My name is Almerin Greef and I have the special pleasure of acting as Programme Director today, as well as introducing Professor Lindy Wezungu, who will be addressing us on the purpose of today. Professor Zungu in turn will then be introducing Professor Muketsi, and without further announcement, you will hear from Professor Mugacini. The task of introducing Professor Lindy Wezungu this morning is a wonderful one for me personally. My personal research interest in the field of occupational safety in the mining and construction industries of South Africa means that I came across the work of Professor Zungu so often that I felt that I knew her long before I actually did. For this work of hers, Professor Zungu received many prizes and accolades, among them the 2019 Women of the Year Award category in Science and Technology awarded by Glamour, the Distinguished Women in Science, Humanities and Social Science Award awarded by the Department of Science and Technology, the T.W. Kambule National Science and Technology Forum South 32 Award, and many more. Now, colleagues, I could keep you busy a long time with the accolades of Professor Zungu, but I only have five minutes and as the program director, I cannot be the first one to go over time. So we're going to have to leave that there. The reason why she's here today, and indeed why we are all here today, is to talk about her work in another but related sphere. A feature article in the most recent leadership magazine puts it best for me when they say, quote, Professor Zungu champions agile leadership for agile platforms of excellence in the area of postgraduate teaching and research. She remains proactive, building a nurturing and supportive research environment for all postgraduate students at UNISA. With her combined leadership and management experience in higher education, she aims to promote and develop high quality research and innovation agenda for postgraduate students at UNISA following a unitary matrix model and signposts contained in the mission statement of the university with regards to postgraduate research excellence and impact. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure on this note to hand you over to Professor Lindy Wesungu. Thank you, um, Professor Kriya, for such a warm welcome, which was really un unexpected and really unnecessary, but it is fine. Um, I will take that. Um, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A special warm, warm welcome to our keynote address, Professor Moegeti. My task is very simple and short. It is just to um, explain or outline the purpose of today's gathering. So the purpose is obviously to launch our very first uh, flagship project for the college for the year 2020. Um, it is a project that is focusing on online and it is accelerating our postgraduate support program. Rightfully so, it is in line with our institutional vision of becoming an African university that is shaping futures in the service of humanity. Specifically, this project, it is a flagship not only for our college, but for the entire institution in virtue or by virtue of the mandate of our college. And it aligns or it talks directly to our strategic focus area, number one, of accelerating a, or becoming a leading open distance and e-learning comprehensive university, obviously in the service of humanity. Colleagues, the College of Graduate Studies, the service college, which was established uh, almost a decade ago, uh, it provides a service to other colleges regarding all matters pertaining to postgraduate studies. 
uh, in line with the vision of becoming an African university that is shaping futures in the service of humanity, our primary mandate as the College of Graduate Studies is to accelerate or to provide and enhance uh, the establishment of a central hub for masters and doctoral support within, the, within our institution, but also extending that support um, or that central hub to the nation, to other African countries, in order to make sure that we accelerate the production of high quality masters and doctoral graduates. You can see that the project or the program that we are launching today aligns um, uh, firmly and aggressively to our primary mandate to make sure that we accelerate the production of high quality uh, masters and doctoral studies. Uh, because of its unique position of our college, uh, we are in a better space to work across all the other colleges of the university uh, in providing support uh, of postgraduate studies. So our college is well situated to cascade some of the critical projects, particularly of transformation in the university, and that will impact significantly in all our postgraduate students who mostly do their research, as well as other academics who provide support in the form of supervising those postgraduate studies through driving a high impact research in their respective colleges. We are very much cognizant of the fact that the university has entered a season of developing and owning new knowledge epistemologies which are centered on Africa. Therefore, our mandate or our proposal or our position as the College of Graduate Studies is to forge a strategic partnership to make sure that we drive or accelerate our strategic focus area of becoming a leading open distance and e-learning institution by virtue of our comprehensiveness of our institution. In that regard, we've also formed partnership with the Department of Leadership and Transformation, particularly on the pillar that is quite critical uh, that involves the transformation of scholarship and we do so um, in collaboration with other departments with an aim of working towards leading the development, the critiquing and the implementation of a new pool of Africa-centered epistemologies. In our college, the flagship project that we are launching today is one of the most critical and fundamental and most um, uh, needed um, 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 a program that is accelerating scholarship transformation and also making sure that we drive or we align to our business model of providing online support programs to our students. We have other envisaged areas of collaboration and transformation in our college, which are mostly aiming at advancing our institution strategic goals and this project of online acceleration uh, for postgraduate student support uh, affirms to that in a manner that it is meant to provide support uh, to our postgraduate student as a way of resuscitating or reaffirming our business model as um, an, an, an institution that is focusing on online um, um, uh, distance learning. Therefore, offering support in academic writing, we know that it is part of the agenda that we are providing in our college. Um, and this program is providing a transformed platform um, for, um, for online um, uh, relative to the historical or the traditional face-to-face uh, -face, um, uh, method or physical provision of support that we used to do in the past. So it is one of the strategies that as a college we are, um, um, are driving on behalf of the institution to make sure that we then migrate from the face-to-face -face, um, 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 methods to online blended support training such as the one that we are launching today. It is in that regard that then we um, as a college 
very much um, 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 excited and very much proud of the work that the team that has done in making sure that the program um, um, is launched today so that it will um, uh, kickstart uh, this month uh, to make sure that our postgraduate students are empowered for them to be able to compete equally with their uh, fellow students elsewhere in other academic um, institutions. On that note, Program Director, please allow me to end um, with the purpose of the day and to switch over to the most important or the critical function that you have delegated to me today, the one of introducing our keynote um, address. Professor Moeketi is a former dean of the College of Human Sciences. Uh, it is by no means a mistake or a default that uh, most of us who are now belonging to the College of Graduate Studies, our origin is from the College of Human Sciences, where we were mentored, we were supported, we were guided, we were coached and we were shown um, um, the, the way through decisive, ethical and impactful leadership so that we could be able now to spread our wings and be able to exert our impact and drive the vision of the institution so that its mandate can be felt equally strong um, um, in the nation and even globally. Professor Moegetzi, it is a great honor and privilege to be given this opportunity to welcome a woman of great magnitude like yourself. Um, a timeless woman, a woman of all seasons. I've decided that I am not going to focus on her accolades because we all know her role, her impactful role that she played as the Dean of the College of Human Sciences. Given that August is a woman's month, I would like to focus more on her impact that she made equally to be to be felt very strongly as a leader um, in the College of Human Sciences, which then translated in making sure that people like us and the rest of the team that is behind this project and many other more colleagues um, um, are able to um, um, deliver as expected. Everyone who has been mentored by Professor Moegetzi um, has felt her warmth and care, and that is attributed undoubtedly just like a mother's touch. With beauty, grace, humility, and wisdom, she has motivated and mentored many to be successful and to display excellence effortlessly. As she comes forward to deliver her keynote address for the launch of this program for today, I hope everyone who is in attendance um, has an attentive ear and feel and will feel inspired by her knowledge that she will impart through her keynote address. I would also like to mention that Professor Moiketi is has been appointed as a emeritus professor in our institution by virtue of the role that she played during her tenure as the Dean in the College of Human Sciences, as well as during her um, um, support or her efforts in accelerating the agenda of the institution when she was working for UNISA during the past many, many years. On that note, Program Director, please allow me to welcome, warm, to welcome warmly our keynote address, Professor Moigeti. Over to you, please. Thank you. Professor Zungu, I truly appreciate the kind words. And I have to mention that you guys and UNISA made me the person that you now claim me to be. And I truly appreciate that. I'm retired from UNISA. I've been retired since 2016 and have been living a blissfully quiet, serene, tranquil life away from the vagaries and vicissitudes of academic life. This piece was interrupted a few weeks ago when out of the blue, I received an invitation 
you know what happens in real life? You get an invitation to this seemingly exciting occasion. And as soon as you accept and request the location, you get a formal thank you letter that has already placed you on the program as keynote speaker. Whilst you contemplate, a Teams meeting has been scheduled for nine o'clock Monday morning, and that Monday is in three days time, and that Monday is a public holiday. Well, long story short, I'm here. I'm your guest speaker. Professor Zungu, it's a great honor really to be part of your team in this important project geared to guiding and supporting UNISA's senior students in their studies. I'm truly happy to be here. Professor Mkuchini, my new boss, you are surely relishing how the tables have turned. Your erstwhile boss, now your subordinate. I promise to be good, sir. Professor Khrief, it looks like the A team is here to stay. I see Denzel also. How resilient has the A team been? A hearty welcome to you all, dear students. I wish you the best of times during your studies at UNISA. I studied at UNISA. I lectured at UNISA. I was a manager at UNISA. Does that make me the horse from whose mouth the true story of this great institution will be told? We'll see. Studying at UNISA can be lonely. You are all by yourself in your little corner. Many of us with no decent accommodation, no electricity, no running water, no study desk, no reference books, no privacy. You share that miserable condition with everybody from your noisy nieces and nephews or roommates to your siblings and your drunken uncle who all wonder why you pursue this unrewarding, useless enterprise called education. However, as they say, every cloud has a silver lining. Studying at UNISA has its benefits. It is affordable, even without the NASFAS grant many families manage. Further, UNISA teaches you to be self-reliant, <clears throat> to manage your time, to think deeply and independently, to be acutely aware of your true circumstances, the world you inhabit, the world around you, the real world, your world, not your university's campus or dormitory or dining hall, but your real world. Because at UNISA you study from wherever you are, where you are immersed in the township or suburbia or rural area or farm, you are able to bring your, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> you are able to bring your own authentic circumstances to the fore. Your research site is exactly there where you live or where you work. Your research question emanates from your life experience. Your research design will be influenced by that environment. Your empirical study will be conducted right there. Data collection tools will be determined by that milieu. Your research methods will be practical and appropriate. Ethical considerations will come naturally. Your entire research project will revolve around something that gnaws you, something that bothers you every day, all the time, where you are. <clears throat> At this stage, you are not even thinking research topic or title. You are simply consumed by this problem, this idea. And then, of course, you start to read. And as you do, 
you discover things, you discover exciting stuff. We have been misled to assume that the world of research is the world of the learned, the world of the exceptionally intelligent, a world different from our own. Even the terminology used in this world is sometimes highly complex and incomprehensible, often unnecessarily so. Universities are often regarded as these high places, you know, the ivory towers where mere mortals like me and you are supposed to fear to tread. UNISA even more so because this great university literally sits on the mountain in Makelniak. We have therefore been primed to approach this world of science carefully and with trepidation doubtful of ourselves. I want to tell you a story of two UNISA students who I will call student D, not Denzel, <laughs> and student R. These two students are friends and they work together. They pass the BA honors degree with flying colors. They enroll for the master's degree together. Student D's supervisor is controlling and overbearing. He suggests a topic of his own interest for the student and ensures that student D gets approval and permission for every step she takes. Student R, on the other hand, identifies her own research area informed by her interest and curiosity in that field. She's excited by the field work she undertakes, the surveys, the interviews, new discoveries. She reads hard, enthuses her two supervisors to read along. She enjoys her studies tremendously, breaking new grounds and discovering new vistas. She gets a distinction pass and declines the offer for her master's dissertation to be converted to a PhD thesis because she already knew what she wanted to investigate for her doctorate. In another four years, student R completes the doctorate, writes numerous articles for publication, even produces a book and establishes herself as an accomplished academic locally and internationally. Now, when I retired from UNISA in 2016, student D had dropped out of her studies for the master's degree because she did not know how to proceed when her supervisor became too ill to continue to work. Moral of the story is that it is always best for a student to identify your own field of research and to know exactly what you want to investigate and why. At the introduction of the lockdown in March 2020, President Ramaphosa announced, among other things, that he had secured a total of 500 billion rand to support the country in dealing with the threats and devastation of the coronavirus. He meant for the money to provide protection, especially for the doctors and nurses and all the frontline employees, to feed the poor, to support business, and to generally give all of us hope. Instead, as we all know, some of that money was disgracefully stolen by greedy people who did not even need it. Some of them apparently high-ranking politicians, others successful business people. Later in July, Finance Minister, uh, Minister Tito Mboweni, in his presentation of the supplementary budget and in his tweets, referred also to the 70 billion rand loan approved by the IMF to support South Africa fight the ravages of the COVID-19. The minister, Tito Mboweni, 
warned the country against what he termed hyenas already positioning themselves to steal this money. Now, if you know a little bit about the hyena, you'll remember that it is referred to as nature's thug, a dim-witted coward a dim-witted <coughs> coward skulking in the back alleys, waiting for an opportunity to mug other more noble animals of their dinner. A few years ago, one university invited me to examine a doctoral thesis in the field of my expertise. As can be expected, I looked forward to being wowed by new developments and discoveries in this relatively small discipline of forensic linguistics. Lo and behold, as I read the thesis for examination, I was confronted with fabrications and plagiarism even from my own work. The student had not done any research whatsoever, but had concocted untruths into something written in exquisite language and carefully packaged as a thesis. That is a typical hyena, someone lurking in the dark alleys of education, not prepared to do the work, but waiting to cheat unsuspecting supervisors and examiners and wrestle a qualification out of the university. Needless to say, the student failed and was excluded from further engagement with that university. UNISA has had her own share of such students. Some were caught and expelled from studying with any university in South Africa. Others were even stripped of degrees already conferred. I'm telling you this, dear student, because I don't want any one of you falling prey of the hyena mentality. Do the work, however hard, learn, acquire knowledge and skills, and be proud of your product at the end of it all. There's a vibrant little firebrand in KZN. Her name is Mbalintuli and she belongs to the DA. Just the other day, I saw her and I think I was actually seeing her for the first time. I saw her confidently taking the podium and challenging the DA leader, John Stian Hazen, to a leadership debate. She talks fondly about her accomplishments as a member of the party, referring to the numerous branches she has established, especially in rural KZN, where the DA in its present form would never have been able to operate. She challenges the status quo and suggests that her party, the DA, unshackles itself from colonial thinking and this white privilege mentality, but rather adapt to the changing world where black lives matter. She dares Dean Hazen to come out and compete for the leadership of the party and not think it will be given to him on the silver platter. Well, I haven't heard John Stian Hazen's response. Now, such a mentality as Mbalin Dulis is what is required at MND studies. You work hard, you earn your lunch. Use the past only as a stepping stone towards breaking new grounds into the future. Copy Mbali's fierce rejection of whatever is worthless and stagnant about the status quo. Imitate her and decimate the futile tried and tested methods that cannot take anyone anywhere anymore. Above all, you have a responsibility to take care of my future, 
which I have placed in your hands, dear students. Dear Professor Zungu, Pro Professor Mkuchini, as I conclude, you have an exciting task ahead of you to ensure that each and every one of these students emerge on the other side with a qualification every one of us will be proud of. A qualification which will enable us to advance our country, to solve our country's persistent problems. Our country is in dire straits, besieged with every scourge you can think of. Crime, violence, especially against children and women, poverty, unemployment, hopelessness, illiteracy, disease, and utter helplessness. These students should emerge with new solutions, new thinking, unencumbered with old colonial stagnation. The kind of solution that Mbalintuli assures us are available from the young, the agile members of our communities. The country needs you and your students to lead us into a brighter future. Forge ahead, my dear professors and your teams. I have great confidence in your project. Good luck to you and to your students, my students, our students, and thank you. Thank you kindly, Professor Mukherjee. We now hand over to Professor Mukherjee. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much, Professor Kreev, for uh, setting the tone and uh, Professor Zungu for reminding us about the, uh, the, the mandate for the college and indeed the mandate for, for UNISA and by inference, the mandate for all higher education institutes in South Africa. And then, of course, as always, uh, Professor Moketsi, uh, you you ground us. You um, I always used to talk about you as being um, the person who is kind of uh, my biggest strength and my my biggest weakness and everything else in between because you remind us about what we do and have done well and then also you remind us about what remains undone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, without taking up a lot of time, I, I think it's it's important to to just uh, speak you through this program that those of us who've been involved in are so excited about. Some of us have not slept for the last three, four nights, not because of stress, literally because of excitement, because we we've spent our entire careers waiting for an opportunity to deliver something like this. And um, and as they always say, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Uh, you will recall if you just look at UNISA itself, uh, you will recall that um, UNISA's greatest steps have always been driven by necessity. You will, if you think back to, to apartheid and the whole way that UNISA offered a different mode of, of, of learning that attended to some of the social injustices that were there. Uh, if you think about uh, the, the history of elitism that was associated with universities where only the chosen few would go, UNISA kicked down that door and um, opened the way for open education, for massification of education. And of course, um, those of us who are dizzy in excitement about this program we see this invention as being yet another reflection of what necessity has driven us to to do and and when i talk about necessity uh, you will all know that the reason you're looking at us from a screen today is primarily because we uh, were visited from november last year by covid 19 
which really has necessitated um, all areas of, of life and specific to us, areas of education to rethink everything that we do. So we, we open up options that are uh, online, uh, purely online and can give as thorough an experience of uh, an experience equivalent to what you would have received if you went to a class. So what this program does is we, we really, really go all the way in every way to attending to the needs of the postgraduate student and doing that in an entirely online way. Um, without saying too much about this, um, as much as Professor Zungu will like to, to deny this, she is the, the very reason this project happened. She hunted me down and um, spent many hours and those who work directly with her know that um, the AM hours, which are 12 AM in the morning till, till 11, 50, 59 AM, I have favorite working time. So you can rest assured, I was called at 5, 6 AM to, to rethink the way that we, we support our students. And, and between her and myself and a couple of other people, this is the baby of those horrific hours of torment, which have resulted in what I think is a, is a beautiful outcome. So if you will let me, I will just speak you through what the program is about. We have much more detail on a website that we will launch straight after this. But um, this is the, uh, the program. So uh, we've called it the UNISA Accelerated Online Postgraduate Research Methodology Academic Writing and Grant Writing Program. But in essence, it's an accelerated online support course to support all our postgraduate students so they become the complete graduate. And we'll speak to you about I will mention very quickly what completeness looks like. Just so you know, uh, UNISA uh, has uh, the largest cohort of, of masters and doctoral students in the whole of uh, Africa with over 25,000 students. So if you if you look at um, if you look at um, the that number alone and you think about the support requirements we would literally need three to 4,000 academics to sustain just the this, this student support. Uh, and that is not possible. And we have known that for some time, but COVID-19 really compelled us to think how, to rethink how we approach postgraduate studies. Uh, it also has given us an impetus and a much more tangible cannot get out of reason for really pushing our Odell business model. And, and it's also given us the strength to overhaul things in ways that we would have never done before. I mean, many of you are working at home now. You can think of your boss and imagine if you had ever approached them and asked to work from home, it would have taken years before they said yes. But COVID-19 did that in a space of days to us. So we came up with this project as a result of that. And what the project allows us to do is uh, it gave us the opportunity to give a totally online training package to key areas, which I will speak to in a moment. It also gives us a totally online support framework for students. And that then means anytime, anywhere, access for you to get support as a student through your uh, academic journey when you do your master's and doctoral study. It also forces us for the first time to utilize platforms that have never ever been explored when they actually existed. If you think seven months ago, how many of us knew about MS Teams? In actual fact, uh, for the first two, three weeks, I would hear people calling it Ms. Ms. Teams as if it's short for Mrs. or, you know, 
uh, and and now you you would be you would be hard uh, pressed to find anybody who doesn't know it as MS Teams. So that is what necessity has caused us to do. And of course, um, this gives us an opportunity also to revisit one of our long-standing requirements as a university around pushing African epistemologies uh, by really engaging our academics to, to forge through. So these are the four specific things that drove us. And they drove us to this, to this intervention that I will share with you now. Um, so you will know that uh, when you do your master's or doctorate, there are basically uh, two areas where uh, two distinct parts of your of your journey. The first distinct part is the development of a proposal. And then the second part is when you have carried out your study and you begin to write to write up your 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 the outcomes or to write up your journey of your study. And traditionally these are the two places where people do not pro progress. So this program we have has got a very distinct uh, package to support people at master's level in developing their proposals. Also, we have um, a similar pathway that is for doctoral proposal development. And these will run from anything from four to six months and it's open to anyone on these pathways. So all of our masters or doctoral students who are registered as being on proposal at the proposal level that is open to them. Similarly, if you are a master's or a doctoral student and you're either writing up your dissertation or developing a thesis, we assist you. The program gives comprehensive uh, assistance through each of the elements that are related to the chapters. And of course, you will know that um, no studies are complete unless those studies are disseminated, like shared out with the world. And, and for that reason, we have an academic writing or writing for publication part to the program. Uh, that is a standalone three month program that is open and it's open to, to all um, students within our master's and doctoral programs. Uh, you, it, you, you do not only have to take one of these, they are totally open. Then of course, some of you will know through your trials and tribulations about the fact that um, you always need funding to support your study, uh, funding to support the outputs and the things that come out of your study and more times than not, we find that uh, we get stuck at how to write grant and, and develop grant applications. So for the first time, UNISA is going to do a, a rollout of this grant writing uh, program that runs for three months. And it once again, it's open to every single master's and doctoral student without restriction. Along with these obvious things that are a part of your expected academic journey, we had to deal with two intrinsic problems that are difficult for all students. The first, as I think Professor Mokhetsi alluded to, is this issue of academic integrity. So we have developed an academic integrity course that speaks our participants through everything to do with how to reference, how to avoid plagiarism, and, and general writing technique. And that is a requirement for everybody who registers on any of the programs that we have. And similarly, at the end of our program, we've uh, negotiated an, an, a first in the world uh, agreement and arrangement with Facebook Africa, where they are going to host uh, a platform that we have called this web-based entrepreneurial development cafe. And basically every one of our masters and doctoral students can sign up to this and they give you training on marketing, but marketing yourself and marketing yourself to fellow entrepreneurs, marketing yourself for the job market 
And um, it also comes with a, a, a certificate that they give a certificate of, of um, participation that they give. And folks, this, these are the range of interventions that we have. Of course, I've, I've run through them without the necessary detail, but uh, it gives you a sense of what uh, we will be offering. And in basic, uh, when we deliver this program, there are two things that we're interested in. We're interested in giving different levels of support. So uh, there may be people who just want to go to a, 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 a faceless session where you attend with all the other 25,000 students and you listen to a lecture. There may be some who have got specific problems of need where, um, for example, they are struggling with how to, to write academic arguments. There is a, a tier that allows for that. Then, of course, there is uh, a much more specialist support thing where the colleges will refer students that they think are in trouble or represent particular marginalized groups for specialist one-to-one -one support. All of these things are offered in conjunction with colleges and we are not replacing your, your pre-existing supervisor. This is just to add uh, a level of depth, a level of variety in the way you understand things. You will also know that once again, we're prioritizing previously left out groups uh, like uh, the academic colleges, uh, sorry, sorry, like women in research, uh, the uh, particular uh, students from the black community and differently enabled postgraduate students. And we would do all this through engagement with, with the different academic colleges. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gents, that is um, the overview of, of the project. Of course, it's a six month project as we speak about it, but it is the intention with this project is that we're going to assimilate it into we are we are doing everything to have it institutionalized so it has a life beyond uh, the the six month. So if you think about this as as a, an intervention that we have received support from uh, the Department for Higher Education and Training to deliver as a once-off with the view that if we do an exceptional job with it, we can make a case for its uh, institutionalization. So I hope that um, this gives a, a very firm reassurance to every one of us who is involved with, with postgraduate students that we really are in a place where we can, we can make a change. So without saying much more, I will hand you back uh, now to our uh, program director so she can uh, speak us through the, the next part. But this is the this is the program that we have not slept over for some days now, and I I hope that many of you feel the same way about this too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I trust that uh, we are all safe under the the current and very problematic uh, times of uh, of the coronavirus and. And, and many of us at this stage have, have either lost loved ones or they have uh, they know people that have lost loved ones. And I think that uh, launching such an initiative at such a time, it, it, it truly demonstrates the resilience of our our leadership in the college and, uh, and obviously uh, the resilience of our students. I want to first extend our warmest welcome to to the student cohort, uh, to the great University of South Africa, and uh, in particular to this esteemed program, which is uh, the College of Graduate Studies Online Accelerated Postgraduate Program. I want to quickly extend also my deepest appreciation to the uh, one of the most progressive leaders in higher education, and of course, uh, in our institution, uh, that is our college dean, uh, the dean of the College of Graduate Stud uh, Studies, who is Professor uh, Zungu. We, we truly appreciate the work that uh, the college is doing. And also 
the project leader, uh, Prof Mugucini, for this uh, noble and very critical intervention uh, for this uh, period that we all are living under. I mean, I think it would go a long way in making true uh, the university strategic focus so in making uh, open distance and e-learning a comprehensive uh, uh, program and uh, to facilitate for research, innovation, uh, community engagement and scholarship. Uh, there th is a, a strategic pillar that was identified and approved by council uh, deliberately such that we're able to make the necessary impact in our community and uh, obviously in, 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 in research and in the world. By developing a, a cohort of skilled postgraduate students in research, methodology, academic and grant uh, writing, this program uh, depicts the journey that you've go, you, you are all going to, to be undertaking, attempting to lay bare the obstacles, yet providing the necessary uh, direction for a truly competent researcher to emerge and contribute to the global discourse. In this, in this conceptual framework, the program tries to tease down the difficulties uh, to make sure that uh, the nuances that ought to find expression in every researcher are achieved and succeed to position our postgraduate students and studies at the pericenter of a global discourse, if not uh, of the global development. In the same spirit that our battle cry connotes, which is uh, to become the African University shaping futures in service of, of humanity, I call on, the, on, on, on all of the student cohort to submerge themselves in this program to unearth the wealth of knowledge presented to enhance their own success and of course our collective success. And I want to give also uh, my very heartfelt gratitude to one of the most illustrious academic who today was our keynote, uh, but in our hearts, uh, Prof Moikes remains uh, having that special place I mean, deliberately because of the contribution that she made in her work at our university uh, for, for, for decades, if not more. Prof Meketi, we appreciate you, we thank you for the continued love and support for our institution. We are truly indebted. But also, I wish also to, to state that uh, with such programs, uh, we, we place our university in a position of deliberately impacting on the lives of our people. And we know that our institution is, uh, is carrying the biggest mandate in higher education, not only in South Africa, but beyond uh, the borders of the Republic. Uh, and this is demonstrated through the, the number of, uh, of students that we enroll each and every year uh, so we can safely say that we are the biggest transformation project uh, in South Africa and in Africa uh, by making sure that education is accessible to all of the, the poor and the dejected students uh, and members of, uh, of the African community and the college positions itself as the custodian of the transformation project, particularly in the postgraduate cohort. And uh, Prof has raised the issue that uh, we have the biggest number of postgraduate students in higher education in South Africa. And I think that is why Prof Zungu would not sleep thinking on how best do we support uh, the current cohort but also how do we redefine uh, our support in terms of uh, 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 online learning going forward. And this project, in as much as it is going to have an immediate impact, the lasting impact is that it will define 
new ways of teaching, new ways of learning uh, in such a way that has not necessarily been done uh, here in Africa and uh, in South Africa in particular. So I truly appreciate what the colleagues have been engaged with, but also I just want to encourage the, the student cohort that we need to grab this opportunity with uh, both hands. We need to, as beneficiaries of a very successful and very critical program, we need to find ways of exploiting the time and the space such that we're able to have the greatest impact. I think that uh, our knowledge and the knowledge that we produce ought to speak directly to uh, positively impacting on the lives of society and the lives of the people that are around us. Uh, I wish the College of Graduate Studies success in this endeavor. I want to encourage, obviously, the student cohort to undertake this journey and to succeed and to be excited about the prospects of, uh, of being the flagship or the inaugural cohort uh, that will uh, demonstrably prove that we can do uh, just as equal or if not better than uh, everyone else. Uh, I wish everybody all the best and I thank you for inviting us. Uh, we're excited to be part of this project as it proceeds into the future and we will want to see a, a day that will celebrate the productivity and the outcomes of, the, of such a noble initiative. I want to again thank uh, Prof. Moegetsi for lending her full support. Uh, I want to thank Prof. Uh, Zungu for her leadership and guidance. And I want to thank all the colleagues that are involved in this project that have led it to its fruition. Uh, we appreciate the work that you're doing as the students and uh, please keep on uh, supporting us. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you.